Well, Coach, tonight is your first regular season game as head coach of the New York Knicks. What's kind of going through your mind right now? What kind of emotions are you experiencing? Uh, I mean, as far as what's going through my mind, I mean, just, you know, that it's not about it being my night or, you know, anybody in particular uh, you know, on our team. It's, it's, it's our night, you know, it's a, <clears throat> a new beginning for our basketball team and organization. And, you know, I'm excited about that you know, from, from a team standpoint. And it's just, just kind of another day on the job, you know, as far as it goes for me personally. Who will be your starters tonight? Uh, tonight, uh, Jose Calderon, Mar Shumpert, uh, Carmelo Anthony, uh, Mark Stoudemire, and Samuel Dell. Now, last week you sort of intimated that the lineup we saw in Montreal was going to be a little bit more than that. Now, what do you think about that? 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 Now, you know, some of the things we've seen, you know, from Lamar. Uh, you know, we, we feel good about having those two bigs out there to start the game tonight. You know, we, you guys are obviously aware that Andre is out right now and uh, the changes some things that we're going to do in the front court as we go along. But Lamar has been great and, and willing to kind of do whatever it is we, you know, we ask of him. And so, you know, tonight he's put himself in a position where he's, he's out there to start. And, uh, you know, we, we feel good about, you know, having him in the lineup. He's, he's worked hard to be in this position, and I'm, I'm happy for him. What is your confidence with uh, Jose's calf as far as his health and, you know, going up a, a point guard like Derrick Rose? Yeah, I mean, Jose looked, looked good in practice yesterday. Uh, you know, the last couple of days he's really picked up his level of activity and uh, really didn't have, you know, much residual effect from that type of work. And so we feel good about where he is right now. You know, I think we should still be smart. You know, it's the first of 82 games tonight, and we have seven games in nine days out of the gate. So, uh, you know, we want to be as smart as we can. But uh, you know, Jose's good to go. In, in our book, you know, in the NBA, uh, after a month into training camp, you know, if, if you're anything above, you know, 75%, that's like 100%. So Jose's done good. You have always emphasized team preseason but what will dictate how someone or how you will match up and defend their Rose tonight? Will one person will you defend him? What is it? No, it'll take all five, you know, it'll take all five guys on the defensive end to impact uh, you know, Derek's ability to impact the game. You know, he's coming off of, you know, a year and a half or so that's been up and down for him physically, but he finished the preseason really strong and uh, looks, you know, very similar to the level of player he was uh, before the injuries. And so, you know, guys that have, you know, all-star MVP level talent, there's no one player you can put on and say, you know, go get the job done. Uh, and that will apply every night. You know, every NBA team has some guy that you can't guard alone uh, and you need help. And, and so we'll play offense and defense as a team, you know, every single night. It wasn't that long ago that you went head to head against Rose, especially when he was his healthiest. Do you give your players advice now? Do you have secrets? How tough was he that you share with your players now as a coach? Um, you know, maybe don't do some of the things that I did because sometimes it didn't work so so well. Um, because he, you know, like I said, he's he's that level of player, um, and you know, I think just even for a league overall, it's it's great to have him back. He's a, he's a key player to, you know, to our league. So in terms of advice, you know, to our players, you know, about particular guys, I mean, we'll, I guess we'll have some of those conversations, but more so if guys kind of solicit the information, you know, I'll help them when I can. Uh, but, you know, a lot of our guys are smart guys. They, they don't need me to tell them how to guard individual guys. Really more so about, you know, our, our team overall and, and the things we need to do to win the game. Yeah, no, I think it, um, you know, the biggest factor is, is, 
you know, who the opponent is as a team and, and how they run their offense, where they look for their points. Uh, and then that kind of informs you of maybe how you should match up in some situations. Uh, so it's not about just having a guy that you just always maybe put on a certain player. Sometimes another player's length bothers certain guys. Uh, other guys that are smaller, quicker, give maybe sometimes bigger guys a, uh, an issue. And so I think in the backcourt and the front court, uh, you know, it isn't in concrete that Shump or one person is going to be our guy that we say in the you know, the premier player or the best ball handler every night. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. But, but, you know, starting out here, that's the way we see it. Is this year's starting five for the foreseeable future, or do you still think you might match up? Well, the foreseeable future is four hours, <laughs> basically. So, um, you know, I, I mean, I understand the question, so I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, in any way, you know, disrespectful. But, I, I mean, we, you know, the NBA, the only thing you can concentrate on is that night. And so, you know, we, we talked to our guys this morning about, um, the fact that, you know, we all have a responsibility to just be prepared for our opportunity when it shows up, and that's sometimes different every night in this game. And our guys that are starting tonight, you know, they have a chance as a group to go out and set the tone for our season. How they play as a group will impact, you know, our decision as coaches about what we do next. Uh, and so we're going to try to be as as consistent as possible, but reasonably flexible from the standpoint that what's best for the team always has to kind of supersede uh, and come first before anything else. No, I mean, I, I don't think it's, you know, we're in a position as a team to, to focus on number of wins per se. Uh, you know, I think it kind of creates an artificial um, an artificial goal that you don't need to focus on at any time, really. Um, you know, for our team, it's more so about uh, establishing habits, uh, you know, creating a culture that, that lends itself towards success. I do believe that there are appropriate times to utilize, you know, other sources of motivation and, um, you know, information, stories, articles, um, you know, to help guys understand the perspective that we should approach this from. Um, and so it's one of many factors as opposed to using it as maybe, you know, a sole factor to, to motivate guys. Coach, you made your uh, debut as a player almost 18 years ago to the day. What are some similar feelings, if any, that you have tonight that you would have? Well, anytime I've you know, ever walked out of a tunnel and approached, you know, the basketball court, um, you know, I've always approached it in, in, uh, from the mindset of wanting to, to win. You know? uh, and so, you know, those feelings are the same. Any team I've ever been on, I've just always wanted to do everything I could to help my team win. And uh, you know, some nights were better than others, but that was always the ultimate goal. And so, walking out of the tunnel tonight, <coughs> as much that has changed in, in 18 years, it hasn't changed at all. The ultimate goal is to just try and help my team win. And uh, now, as a coach, that's at the top of the list. All right, thank you. Yeah, thanks.